In this segment, we're going to talk about the sales pipeline, but now from the opportunity standpoint. Specifically, we're going to talk about how we create different lists that will help us manage this pipeline. We're going to talk about the different stages and statuses within opportunities. There's also a lot of important details within opportunities that we can use to track this progress and our pipeline. And at the end, we're going to talk about the overall concepts of managing the pipeline through opportunities. Hopefully you've already watched the previous video talking about managing the sales pipeline through properties, but today we're going to go into the next stage, which is managing through opportunities. Just like in properties, opportunities also have different statuses. On the left hand side of this screen, and you can see I created a list here that's looking at the entire branch as an example for contract pipeline sales. So here we have these stages, so one pre-bid, two estimate down here, and then within each stage, there can be multiple opportunity statuses that we're going to be talking about. The great part is that you have the opportunity to create this that follows your sales pipeline and your process internally. In order to understand the stages a little bit and the statuses a little bit, let's go in real quick to the admin part and understand what's exactly going on here. First, we're going to look at opportunity stages. And you can see here there's five default stages from pre-bid to estimating, proposing, winning an opportunity or losing an opportunity. That's how we start. Now the flexibility comes in from the opportunity status. And within each stage, you can have multiple statuses. So for example, in the pre-bid stage, we might have one called consultation and we also might have one called new, depending where you are in that. In the second stage of estimating, you can have lots of different options from approved to bidding to an alternate to denied and so on. So these are really important. And then the one called pending approval, of course, you can build in a workflow that says for anything over a certain amount, it has to go this individual to approve that. This makes a lot of sense in maintenance contracts when you have a team working on this and you want to make sure anything over a certain dollar amount gets approved, maybe everything gets approved and has eyes from the manager before moving forward. So back on our screen of our opportunities, we did a bunch of things to both filter and then display. So we have our property opportunity number, job name. We have other things that are really important like the budget dollars or the proposed dollars. So the budget dollar is really important during this sort of pre-bid, the new consultation sort of level where you're thinking where you think that value is going to be. And there's nothing proposed yet. But as you scroll down and we get into the estimate phase, all of a sudden the proposed amount becomes really important because there's actually a proposal or an estimate that's been worked on. It's still in the bidding stage or the approval stage or maybe pending approval, but there is a value. Start date, create date, and then probability is a subjective area that you can fill in where you think you're going to be landing this. And then finally on the right hand side here we have last and next activity. During any sales process it's really important that we have these activities throughout the entire thing and then if you notice something's missing but we want to create it we can create it right from here whether it's an email, a task, appointment. And of course the power list is critical here. We can create multiple lists. I have one here for just new opportunities, maybe one that's just stuff that's being bid on right now that we're working on. Uh, the pending is really important as well if we're going to go to a workflow where somebody has to approve it and then of course it goes to approve. That pending would of course be blank if that wasn't an option in your company and it went right to approved. And then finally we go to delivered opportunities because we want to see what has actually been sent to clients but not won or lost yet. So we're obviously working hard on these to figure out we need a, a solution or an answer. And then just for fun, of course, we want to see how many contracts we've won and this would be a year to date or whatever it is that you want to look at for the time frame for contracts that have come past and actually been awarded to you. So coming back to a list, this one on stuff that we're actually bidding on, another thing that you might want to filter a group by is your sales rep or maybe your area or account manager. So maybe I want to group by the account owner or maybe I want to group by the actual sales rep themselves. So now I'm grouping not only by that different status, but then also by the sales rep. Sometimes the sales rep and the account manager are the same person, sometimes they're not. So if I click through that, you can see that when you create an opportunity, whoever's creating it will default to the sales rep unless you change that. That could be the same person, but if you go back into the property itself, when that property was created, somebody owns that account. So the account owner may or may not be the same person. Another important thing to think about when I'm back in this specific one on a status is I no longer need to be 
grouping or filtering this also by a stage since I'm going right to the status of bidding. There's a few other details you might want to think about within an opportunity. When we go in here, of course, make sure if there's an ops manager or there was a due date when you're working on this. Uh, of course, we need a start date. And then over here, you might want to make sure you have a lead source or the sales type. So you can also do some different filtering and sorting with that as well. So as an overall reminder of our sales process, first we start in properties and we track the statuses through properties. Then we come here into opportunities and we track the statuses here. We make different lists that we can go on our weekly sales meeting and we can quick look at all of our new opportunities, the stuff we're bidding on, whatever's pending, approved, or it's been delivered. Once you have these lists here and you can quickly go through it with your team and whether that's a team of one or a team of 50, this is the most important thing that we need to think about. What is the activity that we're working on? Like any sales cycle, like any good CRM, it's only as good as the data that's put in here. So yes, there are manual tasks that you have to do, but that is the whole point of having CRM and tracking the activity of where we're progressing through this. So as a manager, I want to see what we're doing next. And if we don't have a next activity, how did we fail? How did we not come to the solution before we moved on the last time we spoke to this prospect, that, especially one that we're bidding on or that we're close to proposing on? A final thing to think about during this sales pipeline approach on opportunities is, so we remember over in properties, the stages were often manually moved from one to the next. In opportunities, many of these stages will happen automatically when we create an opportunity and when we complete that estimate, when we send or deliver that estimate, whether we're printing it or emailing it, and then when it gets approved by somebody. All these stages happen automatically. The one thing that doesn't that we have to make sure of is when we win something. So I added an important column over on the right hand side and this is actually property status. Once we win a opportunity, we have to make sure that property is now customer and not still left as a prospect. So it's important to note that because that's not going to happen automatically that we have to make sure we go in. But this won't happen anyway because during the sales cycle when we're running our weekly meetings and we're looking at all of our properties, we'll go through our property list and we'll see who's been a customer or who's already still a prospect and we'll probably change it at that point. But it's important to remember and here's an easy way to do it. You could display that and take a look real quick. So as a quick reminder, we went through creating desired lists and opportunities. We looked at the different stages and statuses of opportunities. Uh, some other important details that you want to track and make sure are accurate. And then of course the overall concept of managing this pipeline. We moved from properties and now into opportunities. And this one's a little bit easier to manage in terms of some statuses moving automatically as opposed to some over there in properties were moved manually. Thank you for your time listening to this presentation on the sales pipeline in opportunities.